In this video, we'll be talking about the Dr. Octorex loop window. The loop window here in gray is what we use to load and edit our loops in the Dr. Octorex. When loading loops, we use the same browse loop function as we would for samples or patches. We also have up and down selectors to select the next or previous loop in our file. The loop that is currently selected in these panels here is the loop that will be shown in the loop window. And it's important to understand how the different loops are being loaded in the Rex internally. In the loop window, you have the loop that is currently selected for editing by the parameters in these knobs here. Above that, in the front panel, you have the loop load slot, these here. These control which loops will play when you click run in the Dr. Octorex. You also have a small red LED next to each loop slot. And this controls the notes to slot function, which can also be controlled by this knob here. The red LED denotes which loop will be controlled per slice by the master keyboard. For instance, if I choose pattern one on my front panel and choose to run, we'll hear loop one. Since I have notes to slot on pattern one as well, when I hit C1, I'll play the first slice of loop one. If I change notes to slot to pattern eight, now I'll be playing the first note of pattern eight when I hit C1 on my keyboard. You can see that it's different there, but when I click run, I'll still be playing pattern one. Now watch what happens when I switch to pattern eight. The loop window automatically pulls up pattern eight for editing and notes to slot stays independent. I can switch this to any of the loop slots at any time. So there's essentially three ways in which we're manipulating loops at once. Through the actual loop slots, through the notes to slot LED, and through the loop window. Reason assumes some of these functions to be intertwined. So when I change to pattern eight in the loop slots, it will automatically pull up pattern eight in my loop window. Watch what happens when I switch patterns while these are running. If you notice, pattern three did not switch over right away. I clicked pattern eight and it was allowed to run for a little while after I clicked pattern three. We tell Dr. Octorex how to switch between loops with these three switches here. We have bar, beat, or 16th note. The default setting is bar, meaning that if I'm running a loop and I click a new one within that bar, it will wait until the end of the bar to switch over on the loops. If I click beat, it will wait for the next beat. And if I click 16th note, it will switch over on the next 16th note. Understanding how Dr. Octorex handles your loops in the front panel and the loop window is crucial to understanding what you're doing when using the Dr. Octorex as an instrument. So we're currently loaded on loop three, but with loop number two in our notes to slot. Let's load loop number one in the loop window and choose notes to slot for loop number one to look at some of the internal functions of the loop window. Once we have a loop loaded into the loop window, we look at it on a per slice basis. And for each slice, we'll have controls over pitch, pan, level, decay, reverse on or off, filter frequency, alt group, or output. Let's use the first slice of loop one as an example. If I edit any control in slice one, it only applies to slice one. So let's pitch this drum and move to the next slice. Notice that there's no change to the pitch control of slice number two, only to slice number one, because all editing from these knobs in the loop window is done on a per slice basis. The controls above this for loop transpose and loop level will apply to all slices in the current loop and copy loop to track will create a MIDI file within your loop locators based on the groove of your Rex file. Now that we know how the loop window is handling our Rex files and how it relates to the way that Dr. Octorex handles Rex files in general, it's time to move on to some of the finer points of slice and loop editing in the next video.